and my family, they're kind of in the, I guess you could say OCD. Like my whole family has some form of, I'm trying to shut off my eye touch here, has some form of OCD. Some of it's crazy, some of it, maybe because I have a little bit of the whole stuff in me. Some of it is crazy, some of it makes sense. Um, one is Persis. And we went to a yard sale a while back, last year. And Mom was just buying this little bag right here. This is a, who is this? This is a Mary Kay cosmetic bag. And I kind of liked it because I thought, you know, ooh, it's soft, kind of cushiony put pencils and stuff in it or mom could just put what she wants and tote it around I have a big huge purse and my mom's side of the family there is some OCD <laughs> because this becomes the second purse and if you don't know what the second purse is this is what happens the women in my family will have the larger purse the bigger purse and it would be the purse that has half of everything they've ever owned in there and then some. And then they'll have the little purse. Now the little purse would be something like this. It would be one of these small little ooh, that's bright. It'd be one of these small bags. And inside it would they would have their um, like wallets. They would have uh, you know, wallet, uh, well, not their wallet. It would be like a wallet, sort of. It, they would have their, um, credit cards, debit cards. They would put their money in there, change, paper money. They would put, um, uh, you know, chapstick. They would put sometimes, um, uh, smokes or whatever they had. They would put keys, initial stuff in this bag. The main important thing that you take with you in this bag, while everything else will be in the bigger bag. And this will get put down in the bigger bag. Now, the reason why that, the reason why I said that sort of, it sort of merits, is because the women will spend hours figuring out what to put in this versus what to put in the bag, the bigger bag. And when they go shopping, they would take the bigger bag with this inside with them to, um, well, let's say they went to, oh, I don't know, get some gas and, well, let's see. Get some gas, pick up the medication, and then go to Walmart. All right? Let's say that's on the list. When they leave the house, this bag will be in the bigger bag. And they would drive, get the medicine, get some gas. Either at Walgreens, at the drugstore, or at the gas station. Before they get to Walmart, they would get out of the car. Take this out of the bigger bag. Put the bigger bag in the trunk. And then they would go to Walmart. Because they're always afraid somebody will steal the bigger bag if they did that at the parking lot in Walmart. Now they'll go into Walmart with just this. Shop. Put whatever they got. Groceries. Food. Whatever they get in that Walmart. They'll put it in the trunk. And then they'll take the big bag out. And put this back in the big bag. Now, the reason why I say that, the reason why I said it has a merit to it, is if you're going to do some shopping where you're going to be toting a lot of bags. Uh, I'm not, I'm not talking about like grocery shopping. I'm talking about like actual, uh, like shopping at the mall. Well, you have to tote all those bags with you. Yeah. A little smaller purse that just kind of drapes around your neck. 
or even like a fanny pack. These little smaller purses are a godsend. Well, not this kind, but something with actual hand on will be a godsend because this this weighs hardly enough. Versus those big bags that women put everything in. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You put like you literally put the weight of triplets, triplet babies in here. So imagine you know you going shopping at the mall and you got this 20, 30 pound filling purse that draped across your neck and you're going <laughs> you're going around tired. You're already tired but you got this you know heavier weight on you now. And then your purse and it falling off your shoulder. Falling onto the floor. You got something with no handle you end up losing it. So you know one of these smaller ones don't weigh nothing, drape them across carry all those bags. Now the only thing you have to worry about is how to open your car door. But this is really what uh, women in my family do. Every woman in my family has two bags. As for where I got this, it was last year, it was winter time. Now winter time yard sales are sort of a double-edged sword. Because some of them are some people just don't have them because it's too cold out. Some people just want to get rid of this stuff. And we went to this one woman. My mom was buying this bag. I think it was something like 50 cents or a quarter. Mm -hmm. Mom was getting this bag right here. And the woman had like eight other bags. Uh, purses, coin purses, uh, makeup bag, you know. And she had eight, maybe nine of them. And she just said, you know, for two dollars or a dollar, you can have all of them. That's what she said. And, you know, we were like, okay. And my mom has them in a box in her closet in her bedroom. I have no idea. It's been a year, but I have no idea how many bags are in there. <laughs> how many of them got used, but... You know, th this is my favorite, really. Smell like vanilla. This is just one of those little... No, this is just one of those little things, and... Sometimes at the you know winter yard sale, you get that. You get somebody who just wants maybe a little bit of cash to you know take the stuff off. Maybe they just want to leave and they're like you know if people don't buy this stuff, I'm gonna have to end up giving it to Goodwill or Salvation Army, and I gotta spend an eternity. Having to box this back up in this cold weather, take it back inside, get in the car, take it all the way to Good Goodwill, Salvation Army. Ugh. Yeah, you, yeah. Anybody that's ever done a yard sale knows. By the time eleven o'clock gets here, you're tired. It's cold. You want to get rid of it. So that's what a lot of people do. Like I said, it's a double-edged sword because some some weekends people just don't have them. But people don't want to have them indoors. They have them out there on the front porch and it's like, ugh. But honestly, for me, the best time... The best time to go yard selling is after Christmas. And you know why. Because, you know, let's be blunt. Somebody gives you a crappy Christmas present you're going to try your best to sell it to someone 